His purpose is also to free the conditioned souls from their bondage to karma and like that. So, uh, because his purpose and the Guru's purpose are the same, Krishna says, he's my representative. Worship him exactly as you would worship me. So we see by a student's attitude towards the spiritual master what his attitude is towards Krishna. Next is following in the footsteps of saintly persons. In the Skanda Purana, it is advised that a devotee should follow the past acharyas and saintly persons because by such following one can achieve the desired results with no chance of lamenting or being baffled in his progress. The scripture known as Brahma Yamala states as follows. If someone wants to pose himself as a great devotee without following the authorities of the revealed scriptures, then his activities will never help him to make progress in devotional service. Instead, he will simply create disturbances for the sincere students of devotional service. Those who do not strictly follow the principles of revealed scriptures are generally called sahajyas, those who have imagined everything to be cheap, who have their own concocted ideas, and who do not follow the scriptural injunctions. Such persons are simply creating disturbances in the discharge of devotional service. In this connection, an objection may be raised by those who are not in devotional service and who do not care for the revealed scriptures. An example of this is seen in Buddhist philosophy. Lord Buddha appeared in the family of a high-grade Kshatriya king, but his philosophy was not in accord with the Vedic conclusions and therefore was rejected. Under the patronage of a Hindu king, Maharaj Ashok, the Buddhist religion was spread all over India and the adjoining countries. However, after the appearance of the great stalwart teacher Shankaracharya, this Buddhism was driven out beyond the borders of India. The Buddhists, or other religionists who do not care for revealed scriptures, sometimes say that there are many devotees of Lord Buddha who should who show devotional service to Lord Buddha and who therefore should be considered devotees. In answer to this argument, Rupa Goswami says that the followers of Buddha cannot be accepted as devotees. Although Lord Buddha is accepted as an incarnation of Krishna, the followers of such incarnations are not very advanced in their knowledge of the Vedas. To study the Vedas means to come to the conclusion of the supremacy of the personality of Godhead. Therefore, any religious scripture which denies the supremacy of the personality of Godhead is not accepted and is called atheism. Atheism means defying the authority of the Vedas and decrying the great acharyas who teach Vedic scriptures for the benefit of the people in general. Lord Buddha is accepted as an incarnation of Krishna in Srimad Bhagavatam, but in the same Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that Lord Buddha appeared in order to bewilder the atheistic class of men. Therefore, his philosophy is meant for bewildering the atheists and should not be accepted. If someone asks, why should Krishna propagate atheistic principles? The answer is that it was the desire of the Supreme Personality of Godhead to end the violence which was then being committed in the name of the Vedas. The so-called religionists were falsely using the Vedas to justify such violent acts as meat-eating. And Lord Buddha came to lead the fallen people away from such a false interpretation of the Vedas. Also, for the atheists, Lord, preach Lord Buddha preached atheism so that they would follow him and thus be tricked into devotional service to Lord Buddha or Krishna. So, uh, we're not on the same level as the Lord. We can't accept or uh, trick the atheists by accepting this nonsense uh, atheistic philosophy. If we do, then we'll wind up uh, getting tricked ourselves and missing our liberation in devotional service. So we should be very cautious about this Buddhist philosophy or impersonal philosophy of any kind that uh, the impersonalists want to deny this oops 
the supremacy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and say that some impersonal aspect of God is actually supreme. Now, we don't accept this. Uh, not only that, we uh, actually fight against it. Because if the impersonal side of Krishna is actually supreme, then there is no supreme authority, uh, which means there is no resolution to any philosophical or moral questions. And if that is so, then basically we can do whatever we like and there is no moral standard or no guide for right and wrong in human activities. And the whole basis of society, of uh, human society, falls apart. Because if there's no final authority, no basis to say what is right and wrong, what is good and bad, uh -huh. If we decry or deny or uh, we uh, don't accept the Vedic scriptures, then nobody can finally make a final solution to any argument. Uh, one can always say, uh, argue on and on and on um, on the basis of false logic. And this is what's going on today. If you try to preach to someone or you try to get into a moral argument with someone about what is right and wrong, for example, meat-eating, then you'll find that uh, they can simply keep coming up with new arguments and refuse to accept the authority of any scripture based on the example of Buddhism. Uh -huh. Because Lord Buddha rejected the Vedas, they say, then we can also reject the Vedas or any scripture. If we don't like the conclusions, we don't like the instructions, then there's no reason that we have to accept. Because of this, the whole human society has gradually gone down into a hellish condition. And this is increasing more and more with time. So one uh, cannot accept the followers of impersonal or Buddhist philosophy as being devotees. Uh -huh. Therefore, uh, we respect Lord Buddha. We offer obeisances to Lord Buddha, but we don't accept their philosophers as being bona fide. Inquiring about eternal religious principles. In the Naradiya Purana, it is said, if one is actually very serious about devotional service, then all of his purposes will be served without any delay. In other words, we all have needs and desires. We all have aims and goals. And uh, we all have different problems that we're trying to solve. All these aims and purposes, all these desires can be served fully by completely engaging in devotional service. Uh, now, in the beginning, that may seem like an outrageous statement, but for someone who's been engaged in devotional service for a long time, they will just nod their heads and smile. Yeah. Yeah, because we're finding, for example, that all the needs of life all the uh, problems and all of the aims of life are fully addressed simply by preaching Krishna consciousness, simply by chanting the holy name and preaching accurately uh, with full reference to the original scriptures and without introducing anything new, anything or any deviation like uh, mundane politics or... Um, uh, cheating the public with uh, illegal businesses or, and stuff like this, uh, then uh, Krishna takes care of everything. Huh? Do you think Krishna is a poor man or that Krishna is incapable of meeting our needs? No, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He really is, and he takes care of his devotees. So the next is being prepared to give up everything material for Krishna's satisfaction. In the Padma Purana, it is stated, For one who has given up his material sense enjoyment and has accepted the principles of devotional service, the opulence of Vishnu Loka, the kingdom of God, is awaiting. So here in the material world, we're struggling very hard just to maintain a little tiny bit of opulence, uh, a little tiny bit of sense gratification, so that we can enjoy. Uh, there's so much pain and suffering here, and we think, mistakenly of course, 
that the solution to this pain and suffering is sense gratification. And if we can just get enough sense gratification, somehow or other we'll be happy. But, of course, that never really works out. <laughs> um, the way we plan it to, somehow or other, there's always some obstacle or some uh, unanticipated flaw in our plan. <laughs> Well, we tried plan B, plan C, plan D. But if they're all based on the same principle, uh, then if plan A doesn't work, how is plan Z going to work? You know. Um, what we have to do is find a different plan, a better plan. Yeah? And our idea of a better plan is that you surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And if you do that and give up this idea of material sense enjoyment, just perform your duty for the, the Lord, you will 